folk song. Maybe it was the snake who offered up the fruit. A choice from what I've seen, not easy or nice. Now I lay me down in the middle of the road. I bet he prayed, he hissed. Calming the forking of his tongue, his instinct for self-preservation. How long it took for God or us to take his offering. The tires of some car ran him over at least twice before his skin split apart and his heart slipped out, solitary and red as meat. Not until its beating stopped did it look like some cherry you might in fact eat. There in the dirt, his body could then have been a stem or a vine longer than your arm, too far to reach. Is it wisdom to know the difference between cooked and raw, ripe and green, the distance in between? When last seen, that heart had become a ruby still attached in our oh-so-natty world, not to a garter but a ribbon you might easily sport as a charm at your throat. The Orchard Song The farmer's son climbs up among the branches of the night. He's always dreamed of harvesting a moon so sweet, so ripe. His eyes are full of silver. He's always had far sight. Beyond his father's land he sees a city made of light. How many moons will be enough for him to leave the farm? All the taxes the land carries, the old man's broken bones. The old man's eyes are water, that second kind of sight. Beneath the tree of night he met a woman made of clay. The farmer's wife will lose her son. He'll tarnish in the town. He'll spend himself. He'll lose his way, counterfeiting the moon. The woman's eyes are oceans. She's always seen her boy climb up the tree of day at play, the apple of her eye. A freeze on in Grange Park. The man out for a walk takes that path through Grange Park, under the chestnut trees so thick with foliage they swallow up the thin electric streetlight shine, leaving the man stepping through a dark, though cool and still, all about breathing, yes, that also seems thanks to the flowers, pale as mist and motionless on limbs that rise above his head to be keeping watch. He turns from the one star he spotted on high towards the mumbling traffic over on Beverly, entertaining the thought of birds of prey, owls most likely perched in the dark, though they don't usually gather in flocks, do they? taking his movements in with their untwinkling eyes. Then out on the sidewalk, he stops to catch his breath, to button his coat right to the collar, covering up his naked throat.